What's going on? It's your boy Jay coming at you with another Splatter Talk Cinema video. Last time I touched on my reasons as to why I feel the original Friday the 13th is not a classic. If you missed out on that video, I suggest that you go back and watch it. It's pretty damn good. Anyhow, I put up a post in a few Nightmare on Elm Street fan pages on Facebook. I'll actually put the links to some of those pages in the description. If you're on Facebook, I suggest you get into one, if not all, of those Elm Street fan pages. You may come across some shit. As everyone knows, I love the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Unfortunately, the series stopped after Freddy vs. Jason. Other than rewatching the movies and many different television appearances from Freddy, fans have been pretty hard pressed to get a new nightmare from Elm Street. Or have they? Going through YouTube, I found a number of fan films dedicated to all iconic slashers. You know me. I automatically started watching the Elm Street fan films. While many are good, I feel three actually stood out. These three shorts re-energized my thirst for a new take on Freddy and the actor portraying Freddy. So Fredheads, I hope you're ready because this is your boy letting you know who I think could don the glove, red and green sweater, and fedora. This is Freddy's successor. Let's get into it. There is a certain posture Freddy has, a swagger if you will, knowing how to taunt your victims with just a simple silhouette, how to incorporate a certain slouch due to the glove being too heavy, how to come up with the sound, the laugh, the look. Robert England did it best, with only Jackie Earl Haley attempting to recreate Freddy, we have yet to see another succeed on the big screen. On the small screen though, there are three guys who embody everything I've grown to love about Freddy and they put their spin on it and they made the character their own and managed to entertain me throughout the whole thing. Here are my three picks for Freddy's successor. Number one, Kevin Roach. I was introduced to this short about three years ago. Just doing my normal YouTube search of A Nightmare on Elm Street, I stumbled across Rubble Rousey Comics' Confession of Fred Krueger, with Kevin Roach playing Fred Krueger. This short is about 30 minutes and 48 seconds long. It's one scene, and the scene is the interrogation of Fred Krueger after he was apprehended for murdering the children of Elm Street. From the time he came into the room and the other detective took off the jacket and you see the red and green sweater, all I saw was pre-burnt Freddy. The interaction between Detective Doyle and Fred Krueger is worth mentioning. The detective's question only brought the performance of Kevin Roach out. One thing that I love to dive into is how an actor gets into character. And I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall as Kevin Roach got into the character of the Springwood Slasher. This short explores why Freddy did what he did. This short actually takes the undertone of pedophilia right out the story, which I really like. This Freddy kills because he's envious. He hates the fact that he grew up with nothing and these kids have everything. Their happiness was torture to him. That's what made his take on Freddy so incredible. The one line that brought me back that I could actually see human Freddy saying, Mr. Crew, call me Freddy. He had me from there. If you're looking for a pre-burnt sadistic Freddy that'll give you the creeps as if it belonged in the series, check out Confessions of Fred Krueger starring Kevin Roach as Fred Krueger. The link will be in the description. The second gentleman I would consider to play the son of a hundred maniacs, Mr. Roberto Lombardi. I came across Blinky's Krueger, Tales from Elm Street, and was automatically blown away by the production quality. With that aside, each one of these short fan films from Bleaky Productions has one thing in common. 
the man playing Freddy Krueger, Roberto Lombardi. These shorts show his take on a pre-burnt Freddy in the beginning, but over the course of six shorts, we get to see how he would portray human Freddy and dream demon Freddy. Each short is very well written and very entertaining. I feel Roberto Lombardi channeled an inner England but put his own spin on it. I see his Freddy speaking to everyone as if he has something to hide, but no one actually can catch on to it. He's very sly and cunning. You see him lure his prey by manipulating and coercing while maintaining a PTA middle-aged father persona. Speaking of father, one of my favorite scenes is after Roberto kills Mikey. Him and Catherine are eating ice cream when Freddy hears Mikey's parents crying in the stall behind them. He portrays himself to be this concerned neighbor while composing himself. That scene was great. He really embodied that Freddy who we saw strangling Loretta in the backyard. That Freddy who would be cutting himself in the basement. That Freddy who would kill the defenseless gerbil or hamster or rat or squirrel or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> the last two shorts have Roberto Lombardi behind the makeup as Burnt Freddy. Although I love his performance as Burnt Freddy, Roberto shines as the pre-burnt human Freddy. The pedophilia vibe is there, but it's not because he's running his blades up somebody's skirt. It's because how lustful he acts toward the pleasure of killing. The rush he gets from it. He looks so turned on by it. His portrayal was very standout. The last person who I feel could fill Robert England's shoes kind of fell across my timeline in the form of a petition. Make Paul Bailey the next Freddy Krueger. When the hell is Paul Bailey, I said to myself. So I turned on YouTube to find him, and boy, did I find him. I came across an acting demo for consideration to be the next Freddy Krueger, and boy, it's fucking mind-blowing. The demo is 3 minutes and 29 seconds long. It's just scenes and dialogue from Bailey as Burnt Freddy. The lighting in the scene is epic. The one-liners that he says are tailor-made for Freddy without him sounding like Robert England. The makeup is spot on. I reached out to Paul Bailey and he accepted my friend request on Facebook. I appreciate that. Um, I actually found out by going to his profile that he is responsible for his own makeup in this demo. You can tell that he took the inspiration from Freddy's revenge for the makeup, but boy is it spot on. The scene that completely blurred the line between England and Bailey for me was 45 seconds into the demo. Did you hear that laugh? Most importantly, did you see his grin? It looks spot on. Or how about this? The game's cold. This is back, bitch. Holy shit! I would love to see an Elm Street film with this type of gritty production behind it. Paul Bailey, we're waiting patiently. With Michael Myers back in the theaters with the rebirth of the Halloween franchise, it's not out the realm of possibility for Freddy to enter our dreams once again, but with a different actor portraying him. If I actually had to pick between the three, I'd say I'd have to go with, uh, I, I can't, I can't choose. Each one of these actors brings some quality to the role that hooks me. Whether it's Kevin Roach and his disdain for children's happiness, Roberto Lombardi's lust for the chase and kill while remaining the blue collar to his neighbors, or Paul Bailey's spot on line delivery and look, each one of these actors does such a great job with Freddy that I could actually watch individual films with each one playing Freddy. But what do you feel? And do you think Kevin Roach could handle being Freddy and being behind the makeup as well as he did in the interrogation room? Can you see Roberto Lombardi portraying Freddy in many, many sequels to come? Or could you be in front of the screen watching Paul Bailey bring it to the table? Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, 
hit that subscribe button and the bell so that you stay up to date with Splatter Talk. Give us a like and a comment and share the page with other horror fans. I want to thank Kevin, Roberto, and Paul for doing what Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema have failed to do for 17 years. Give us another tale from Elm Street that pays homage to what's come before while having us clamor for things to come. This is your boy Jay from Splatter Talk Cinema Review. It's a wrap.